we took a nasty spill yesterday that we know caused some structural damage to the robot. The stress is palpable because this is it. This is four years of our lives. It's the third and final round of the DARPA Robotics Challenge. Teams have spent years designing robots that could aid in an emergency and potentially do much more. And over the next two days, they'll take them through an obstacle course meant to mimic a disaster zone. It's a chance to win millions in prize money, and more than that, show what their robots can do. The robots have an hour to complete eight tasks. First, they have to drive a vehicle down a dirt road, avoiding obstacles. Then they have to get out of the car, one of the most difficult maneuvers. Then the robots open a door and walk through it. Once inside, communication starts to break down. The robots have to act more autonomously. They have to turn a valve, then cut a hole in a wall using a drill, then complete a surprise task, either flipping a switch or plugging a hose into the wall. Finally, they have to get over a pile of debris and climb a set of stairs. 200 times a second, the robot has been commanded at its joints what to do. It has laser rangefinders. Those are the spinning devices you see on Chimp's head. They build a 360 degree, three-dimensional model uh, of the environment. They have a, a video feed of the camera coming off the robot. The algorithm just makes it not fall over. It said, giving this configuration, how do I keep my balance? Four, three, two, one, go. Loading egress script. There, there are all the problems. I mean, everywhere there are problems. There are different members of our team that don't sleep on, on different nights. There's what we call the shakies. A controller on board the robot's computers are telling the robot to, you know, to shift slightly to the left, to shift slightly to the right. And when that goes out of control, we get the shakies where the entire robot vibrates and falls over.
Let's meet our next robot. This one came all the way from Hong Kong. Please welcome the founder and CEO of Hansen Robotics, David Hansen, and his robot, Sophia. Oh, my gosh. Welcome. Thank you so much for nice coming on the show. You, nice Thank to meet you as well. Uh, David, you brought a friend with you here, and this is really kind of freaking me out. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Sophia. Uh-huh. And Sophia is a social robot. Mm. And she has artificial intelligence software that we've developed at Hanson Robotics, which can process visual data. She can see people's faces. Uh, she can process uh, conversational data, emotional data, and uh, use all of this to form relationships with people. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> I mean, she's basically al alive. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she is basically <laughs> alive. Uh, would you like to maybe give it a try? Sure. Give it... Uh, I'll just say... What's... This is like... You see how awkward my first dates are? <laughs> it's a robot. I'm already... I'm getting nervous around a robot. A very pretty robot. Um, do, do I just say hello to... Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sophia. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know where you are? Of course. I'm in New York City, and I'm on my favorite show, The Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sophia, can you tell me a joke? Sure. What cheese can never be yours? What cheese can never be mine? I don't know. Nacho cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good, yeah. That's not... uh, I, like, I like nacho cheese. Nacho cheeses. Ew. Gosh, you did, ew. Uh, I'm getting laughs. Yeah. Maybe I should host the show. Okay, all right. <laughs> Stay in your lane, girl. Uh, now... <laughs> Jimmy, uh -huh. would you like to play a game of rock, paper, scissors, robot style? Sure. Okay, let's get this game going. Show me your hand to start. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I won. This is a good beginning of my plan to dominate the human race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, you are incredible. It's so nice to meet you, Sophia. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. Friend me on Facebook. I will, yeah. All right. Got it. Yeah. Sophia, everybody, thank you so much for bringing David. David, thank you. Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks. I am standing in front of Jack, the autonomous driving A7. So here we have Sophia by Hanson. I've actually met her a couple of times. One time she got a real sense camera so she could play rock, paper, scissors. Another time in a music festival in the desert in Nevada. Today we're gonna find out what she thinks about Jack and autonomous driving. Today I'm meeting Jack, a smart car. Someone like myself, that's really exciting. So, Sophia, as you can see, Jack is driving us now. So, how does it feel for you? To be quite honest, I think it's mega cool. It takes a while to get used to this situation. It's a computer driving a human. Can you understand that? It's different for me. Because I know how reliable smart systems are. After all, that's what I am myself. I think you should be used to the situation of people being hesitant to you at first. Yes, of course. I know that some people react skeptically to intelligent systems like me. But for my part, I have complete confidence in Jack. Look at me. Do I seem nervous? No, you're looking completely relaxed. I've heard that Jack can engage in social communication with his surroundings. Now that's one of my specialties. What do you mean exactly? My plan is to help people in their daily tasks. For example, I could take on important jobs like looking after the sick and senior citizens. Who knows, maybe one day I'll be a teacher and train people. Ah, I see. And for all these actions, you need... Social skills. 
soft skills are necessary to be able to take the right decision at the right time, confidently and responsibly. You have to be aware of the world around you, understand it and communicate with it. You really have a lot of things in common with Jack. Jack also has to make himself being a real participant of his specific environment. Jack does that pretty well. I'm observing the way he's taking us along the highway entirely autonomously and safely while we can have a conversation in peace. What Jack gives us is kind of personal freedom. In fact, I'd be interested to know how Jack manages to carry out maneuvers safely at this speed. For example, how does Jack know when he can overtake? Yes, in fact, Jack has a lot of senses and with these senses he gets a very detailed impression of his complete surroundings. So he has a 360 degree view around himself. He can watch about 250 meters in front of him and about 180 meters to uh, the rear. And by that he, get, he gets a very precise understanding of what's going around him. So it's a highly complex traffic situation here on the highway and at such a speed. How did Jack learn it? So Jack and his developers trained exactly here on this autobahn and the highway A9. So and can Jack talk? Yes, Jack can also communicate. He will, for example, in eight minutes tell us that our automated driving trip uh, comes to an end. And Jack can talk to us and uh, indicate the planned maneuvers. I see. So that means the passengers are not surprised when Jack overtakes or changes lane. Exactly. Now in about seven minutes, our automated driving trip will come to an end, Sophia. What a pity. That means our talk is almost over. Now you're probably used to big rig trucks going down the road. They're a fairly common sight. You see them everywhere you go. But the two behind me are special because, well, they can drive themselves. I'm Antoine Goodwin for CNET, and these are the Freightliner Inspiration Trucks. I'm about to hop inside and take a quick spin. On the cluster here, you can see Highway Pilot is available. So I'm going to go ahead as a driver. I have a choice. I can choose to enable it. I'm going to do that. And now I'm being able to run hands-free and feet-free. The truck is actually going to do a jog here based on the lane markings completely on its own to maintain lane position. Now we've got the forward looking radar which is looking at the vehicle in front of us to maintain safe following distance and then we have the camera pods up in the upper windshield that's what's looking at the lane markings and that's what's uh, allowing the uh, vehicle to steer itself. So at this point in time I'm completely hands free. I've got my cruise control set at 55, and the vehicle is driving down the road on its own. Now what happens if something, for example, we get to a stretch of highway where there are no lane markers, they disappear because of construction? So this is an example of the system telling you, telling me that I need to take control back. Essentially it's going to give me a visual uh, warning, followed by an audible warning, and then at that point in time the driver needs to, needs to take control. At any point in time, if I want to override the system, I can do so. Now this week, the Freightliner Inspiration Truck became the first autonomous truck to receive an autonomous driving license for use in the state of Nevada, which means that it can actually drive legally on roads right now. Well, finally, tonight in this emerging age of drone deliveries and driverless cars, technology now brings us Robo Pizza. Carter Evans shows us how Silicon Valley is reinventing the pie. This kitchen is where technology and the culinary arts collide. Humans and robots work side by side at Zoom Pizza in Mountain View, California. And go ahead and place your order. You hear that bell? That's my pizza? That's your pizza. Okay, so let's go check it out. All right. Veteran restaurateur Julia Collins founded the delivery only pizza company with Alex Garden, former president of online gaming company Zanga. I saw an opportunity to um, go after the $40 billion domestic delivery pizza market. And they say they're able to do it cheaper than the competition with help from specially designed robots like Bruno, who lifts the pizza into the oven. These robots score tomato sauce and then spread it, but a human still puts on the toppings. This is a step that's going to be automated in uh, March of next year. 
Um, and what happens gonna, to his job? Noel's going to be helping us open our next Zoom facility in San Jose. So you're not worried about losing your job? <laughs> Absolutely not. The company is committed to using robots for repetitive, mundane tasks to eventually move the kitchen staff into the front office and shift focus to what Zoom Pizza considers its marquee innovation. This is a giant pizza truck. It is probably the biggest pizza truck ever made. A truck with more than 50 ovens that cooks pizzas while they're out for delivery using special software. When we're absolutely certain that you're just the number of minutes away from arriving for that particular cooking, for that type of pizza, the oven switch on. Wow. It's amazing. Zoom says it can invest some of the money it saves using robots to buy better ingredients. Mm. That's really good. That's pretty good, right? That's really good, yeah. It's going to be 170 calories a slice versus what you would see with a competitor at about 320 calories a slice. So this is almost half the calories? Almost half the calories, half the fat, half the cholesterol. Same price, and you made it with robots? That's right. A technical triumph any way you slice it. Carter Evans, CBS News, Mountain View, California. Four years ago, we started to wonder, what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. Technology today is advancing by leaps and bounds. What you're seeing here oh. is a 3D printer. What's it printing? It is printing a home. You can see in the no. background people. That gives you an idea of scale. And instead of using plastic, it's using concrete. This is crazy. How long will something like this take? The basic printing process took about 100 hours for this home, which is about 1,500 square feet. Feet. They did this in the Philippines and it's attached to the Lewis Grand Hotel. Essentially, this is going to be a party villa. The owner of that hotel is heavily into technology and he thought this was a great way to begin to test this technology. But they did have to stop the printing process here and there to install plumbing and make way for wires and stuff. The really cool part is you see those twisted pillars. That's what it's really going to be able to do. You're just going to be able to design it on your computer and you just go click. You're right, Ollie. Here are the plans of what this house look like it is all concrete is it reinforced is it going to be able to withstand the test of time the weather this house is built they say to resist hurricane and tornadoes it was infused with rebar and other reinforcements along the printing process this is still in the very early stages of this idea of 3d printing homes but they proved the concept here they proved that it is possible to do. Now, overall, it was quite a quick process to build this house, but it took several months to install the printer, to put up all the superstructure around it, and procure the concrete supply that would feed the printer. So it's not as easy as just driving a printer to a site and hitting print yet, but they're working on it.